And as it started, uh, Christina, the floor is yours. Yes, OK, so hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, well, first of all, I'm Christina Panema, uh, working for the University of Technology. And today I will uh, present uh, some, well, the current status of some plugins. The general idea for these plugins is actually to support uh, the engineering process and support like the automation of part of uh, these steps. Uh, it's not uh, completely automated, so that means that we are automating some of the process, um, but like there is some uh, the need of a person that actually start this and everything is starting in the design phase. So we are assuming that we have uh, the design of uh, the use case. I will show you what I mean with that. And then from there, I will show you what things we can generate, uh, what we are getting and uh, how we can also use these models and the generated uh, assets to once that this uh, all the all the code and everything running, how we can actually um, well uh, validate in some way. Maybe validating is not the the best word, but like compare and to know what things are working and what is not. So I will start, and I think that is the the, the best way to to explain this is actually showing. So I have here now uh, Eclipse uh, IDE. And I have one use case uh, where I have defined uh, all the different aspects of a local cloud. We have here the local cloud. So we have like a, a collector, then some sensors, some terminals and a database. All these are uh, our head system or that's the idea. And we have uh, the ports that would be like the uh, services. Uh, to define uh, this local cloud, uh, I'm following the same structure that um, uh, that the Arrowhead documentation would have. So we have here uh, the local cloud design description. Uh, we have uh, the system design descriptions, the interface design descriptions. So, and the, this has also operation. Well, all these details, I'm using the old Arrowhead uh, profile which means that uh, once that the, the new one that Jerker is uh, working with is uh, stable and uh, like kind of release, then all these can be updated to, the, uh, to that version. But right now, uh, this is uh, working with the old version. So what I've implemented is these new plugins. And you can see that here we have an Arrowhead menu that is new. And we have three different types of uh, plugins. One is for the development. So we can generate um, like deploy the core system, the database roles and the uh, some part of the uh, application systems. We can set up the database from here. And uh, we can um, validate and I said already that maybe validate is not going to be the final work, uh, but for now it's called validate. Uh, but what I'm I will show you, but when I'm doing here is uh, comparing uh, the models with the database and the models with the code. So I will start from the beginning and I will use, I don't know how to take the bar with a code. Okay, so, ah, well, I almost forget. I have here like this folder that is completely, completely empty. That is the one that we're going to use to generate all this example. So uh, we can choose between the only the mandatory core system, so service registry, orchestrator and authorization system, or uh, all the mandatory and support core systems. Uh, in this case, and to make it like uh, faster, because if we select this one, it's going to clone the whole repository and that takes some time. So I will select mandatory core system. I'm using a Mac uh, like we try to test all these plugins for the these three operating systems. Uh, it could be that there is some bugs, but uh, I think that in general they are working for the three. Uh, so that's good. And right now uh, I'm using mainly the Java version. If there is like a C++ or a code version in the future, it could be added. And I will uh, use a skip compilation test just to make it faster. So, but the idea is that you, if you actually are working uh, with the core system, it's obviously recommended to use the, the test, but just to make it faster for the demo. So 
this is a star working and see that we already have this minimal cloud that is like some like a small repository with the, the mandatory core systems and uh, a new folder once that the, the maven is uh, finished all these uh, different parts are done we'll see that we have the arrowhead folder and this arrowhead folder we will see that we are going to generate more things right now what we have is the uh, yar files already uh, compiled and um, in windows uh, you will also see here if you're using windows uh, some scripts to to run and uh, these uh, executables these yar files i need to add it for uh, for uh, mac it was before but then i need to update it okay so this is just very simple the next step then would be to deploy the model systems so the application system in another words for uh, in this case we are using a skeletons so we are generating a lot of things but not the business business logic uh, test right. so we can select the local cloud if there are several local clouds we can select uh, any of them and then we can uh, by default uh, we use the same uh, name for the project but if you want to generate generate for the same local cloud different projects let's say that we are running sensor a and sensor b in one device and the database is in another then it's recommended then have different projects for each one for each device uh, so we can just write different names and then we will select the sensors that we want to uh, like the system sorry the system that we want to generate again uh, the language right now is only java but uh, the idea is to add go and whatever other version we can uh, we have for the for the framework i'm using mac so now if we go directly to the folder we will see that we have this new uh, example cloud and inside we have uh, the project f with the general POM that it has like the arrowhead uh, library and um, uh, I think the Java Spring and then for each system we can see like a couple of them just very quick we have the POM with the dependencies and then we have the code and this code uh, well it follows if you if you are familiar with the arrowhead uh, projects you will see that it follows the same we have for example the application properties and this application properties now it has actually all the information that we can get from uh, the model uh, we have uh, the same structure for the source code and that includes uh, the main for example uh, the application listener and the DTOs. DTOs are like the or the different uh, operations what are actually the, the payloads how they are structured so for example here we have like system name system type value metric time and all this is actually uh, generated from what is a structure here so for example in this case you can see in this operation we have a payload that is like uh, the system name the system type and this is what we just generate um, I can also, for example, show you the main. Uh, the main has all the functions that are necessary to communicate with the orchestrator because this is like the consumer. And uh, but this already kind of configured to um, to connect with the service that are defined in the uh, model, including, for example, uh, encoding. So, and I didn't mention, but uh, this is, for example, for, uh, for HTTP, but uh, we can see here the ADT post, but uh, it also generates for co-op right now. So it supports uh, HTTP, co-op, and for encodings, XML, uh, JSON, and Cibor. And then, of course, like methods like get, post, put, all the, this kind of REST uh, methods. For the provider, uh, it will be similar, but then we have well the, the the classes that are necessary for a provider. I will just so you will have, for example, the security classes that are like common, 
And then we have the application listener where we are registering in the service registry. Uh, in the it is here, I think. Mm, I cannot find it. Ah, here, sorry. Uh, so we are actually uh, registering the services that are defining the model. If we have more model, then it will be more. Um, and the controller, in this case for HTTP, and it, since it's a post with this path, uh, we consume a JSON, we uh, produce JSON also, and then we, we kind of connect with the DTO that is in the other folder. So all, all this like kind of a structure is already defined, and what is missing is the business logic. So that's something that since we are not modeling right now with this profile, this business logic, uh, it could be added as possible, but right now is not part of uh, this version. OK, so we have now the core systems and we have somehow the application system, but uh, we will need also the connections between them. So that means orchestration rules and authorization rules. So if we go to Arrowhead, we can use the deployed database rules. And this has been extended since the last time. And now a part of orchestration and security, we also have system service registry. And what this does is actually generate the SQL script to populate the database based on the model that we have created. I will do it very quick for all because well yeah I can I can it's very quick so uh, local cloud orchestration maybe with those two is enough I don't know uh, we have now this new folder and uh, since I select orchestration on uh, service registry then you can see that uh, it has all the information if I open this in my SQL, it looks like this. So it's uh, adding the, the identifier, the address, the port. All this information is actually part of the profile. If not, obviously, cannot uh, uh, populate the database. So it has all the instructions. I will run it later. Orchestration rules is using uh, the orchestration store because this is part of, uh, it's already decide who is talking with who. And that would be the same for the, I, maybe I can do it, yeah. Uh, and you can see now that we have also the security. The security are uh, intra-cloud uh, like basically what it does is actually uh, fill the authorization into cloud and the authorization into cloud interface connection uh, for each uh, connection that we are doing that we are creating so basically for each line in the model that connects to ports then we are generating this code so now we have all this but we want to actually run it right so what we create is a, a small plugin also for the database. And for that, I will show you my bench as well. So I have the local instant. Um, I will just drop the schema. So you see this. Uh, drop now. OK, so well, now we start like um, yeah. now we don't have anything right so if we start from the beginning uh, what we want to do is uh, set up the database also like everyone needs to set up to use the Arrowhead framework so I was here I, I select the uh, setup database I will need to put the information about the database and the user and host that I want to create, and I'm not going to put right now here. And it says that it's created, the process has finished, and when I go here, if I refresh, we have the tables. 
And these tables are empty, of course, because like it's just like, uh, well, it's empty, but we have the privileges. This is important, okay? Because uh, for everyone that, that has worked with this, uh, probably you know that not you not only need to create the database, but you also need to provide the privilege so the service registry, the orchestrator, all these uh, systems can uh, gather information if it's needed. So we have this, and what we are going to do since we create the, the SQL is open. Uh, sorry. We are going to uh, workspace test, and then this is what I just created, generated. So we can use system service uh, registry SQL. We execute it, and now when we go to uh, for example, system. We have the systems that are the ones that we generate with the information that is part of the model. Same for the service registry. And we could do this the same open for the um, for the security, for the orchestration that are the other SQL. And um, once that we have this, we could just run the, um, the different files. Um, and we'll we'll have like the like the cloud that we have a model running in like very like I think that is quite quick. And now what I'm gonna show you is like an extra feature that is related with the validation. And that's new, and uh, we are working on this, so it's a little bit buggy sometimes, <laughs> especially with the code one. But uh, you will see. So right now we have here. In the like the view for the local cloud. So this is our local cloud. As I mentioned, we have the systems and we have the ports that are part of the services. If I go to Arrowhead validation, validate with the database. And this is what is uh, I need to do it twice. So this is a bug. Um, and I refresh. Everything is green because I use this model to generate the script to populate the database. So right now uh, we can come like what is doing is comparing uh, the model what is actually uh, running in the uh, database. And if we assume that the database only have available systems, what is the, one of the premises with the service registry, that means that we can know and we can see in the model which systems are available. If I remove one, let's see this one. Uh, so I will just remove it. I need to apply it. Because from how this system just uh, is broken and fell. OK, so now. Uh, sorry, uh, arrowhead validation on oh, that nice. Sometimes terminal V is telling me like it's not uh, work. So right now is you need to actually ask for this validation. The idea is also that you could actually have this plugin that automatically tell you when is something what something has happened, like some kind of alert. Another thing that we realize is that we often uh, generate code from models, but then when we modify the code these uh, models uh, are obsolete, right? Because we, you keep working in the code and you forget somehow about the models. And to avoid this, uh, we create some kind of backward uh, kind of communication between the code and the model. So let's see, uh, and this is something that is not complete. It works a little bit and it's like if for example, uh, well, I will go there because I think it's more. So if let's see that we, after we generate everything, we actually duplicate, we kind of create a new terminal because the project requires it and then we do it. And we call this uh, terminal C, consumer, I need to, uh, Change a couple of things because if not, it's not going to work. Mm. 
Argentina. Oh, several times. So this is in this case C. I just gonna update the name. I'm gonna assume that the code is the same. Code is the same. Um, and I also need to change this application properties. We could change more details, but right now I'm gonna only change like the name. Uh, and now we have just need this new code. What happened? Like the model is uh, outdated. We don't have here uh, that. So what we do is go to validation, uh, validate with model with code, and what it's going to do is actually compare the model uh, with the code. And now if this works. Yes, so now we have this and this is just uh, the CSD because what we have done is create a new system, Terminal C. So uh, we have created the model uh, for that system that was uh, created for the code. It doesn't have the same aesthetics because we don't apply uh, the same uh, colors, but uh, the, the part of the model is there and the idea is to extend this in a way that is uh, for every service, for like that. I mean, we need to decide what things we are going to actually check and it needs, the code need to follow some structure, but it's a way to maintain the model uh, synchronized with the code and also we can uh, continue using these models in the operation phase and not forget about them after the design. So uh, this is all from my side. This is the current status. Do you have any any question or any comment? So, thank you. Thank you, Christina. So questions? Jan? Yeah, thank you, Christina, for a great presentation. I have actually several questions I would like to ask. Uh, so uh, first, uh, uh, when you are uh, when you are creating the uh, the deployment for the Eclipse Arrowhead, uh, have you uh, thought about generating containers from from this configuration instead of just putting it in as a everything runs on uh, the target system uh, as you have right now that you put everything on the folder and then you need to run it i haven't thought about it but it's a good idea actually because that would mean like you can have like the container so you can just like yep. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. We, we, we were, because, for example, uh, on BUT, we are uh, currently uh, deploying our uh, uh, both core services and, and the, the uh, services that are uh, interacting with Eclipse Zero Head as uh, Kubernetes uh, containers. And we also have Docker images for various of our services uh, and also the, the for the deployment of Eclipse Zero Head. So, it, this would be good when you have all this uh, information about the services, their interconnection and so on, to generate a container per service that will communicate with each other and you can kind of redeploy it where you need to, uh, which would be very convenient for the users. Yeah, that's true, that's true. That's something that can be considered for like the extension of this work. And I, okay. I think... It's a matter also. Once that you, they, I mean, the, the pro, sometimes the most difficult part is actually us trap all the information necessary from the model. But once that we have it, then it's a matter of uh, generating scripts and things like that. Like it's like some internal uh, processing of the model, and then. I, I see some people in the chat were just asking if they're uh, regarding the deployment into Kubernetes, if there are some resources available already for it. I uh, we, we were just dealing with it recently at the BUT when we were deploying uh, Eclipse Zero Head Core services at Kubernetes. I saw that I think version 4.5 had in the description uh, the support for Kubernetes, but I never seen any documentation regarding this. I only see uh, Docker images, so I uh, do not know if there are other people who have some some experience with deploying it on Kubernetes cluster. We we now have in BOT, so if someone is interesting, we can definitely provide some feedback or help. And it would be good to have this functionality integrated with these modeling uh, plugins. Uh, I think to to generate everything from the models. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Raymond has a question. Okay, it's it's not a question. It's just two small notes. Uh, it's three actually. So the first, it was a very convincing demonstration. I like it a lot, but I see some uh, small problems. Maybe it's the first one is when you uh, execute the SQL script. It it run. It, it was snake. actually one uh, one error. I know, I know. So so maybe you should fix that. And uh, the second. The second one is. Olaf, uh, can you mute Olaf? Thank you. Okay, so the second one is when you uh, generate the DTO classes. I noticed that uh, you use float to the on the to the floating point. Uh, uh, variables and uh, actually nobody use float. It's it, you. You should use double because it's 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 much more precise. Yeah, I think that that's because here is using real, but yeah, that but that's a, yeah, that some things that can be easily changed is actually part of the how you actually map the yeah. variable, like the profile yeah. variables types with the code and regarding the errors. I know and I said at the beginning is a little bit uh, buggy some places. But the the problem with this is re requires quite time, like when it comes to re refinement. And uh, right now it works, as you see. But for example, you are not seeing like I have like a, a small stack of errors related with, for example, this synchronization because sometimes it finds like uh, well, there are things that need to be uh, finished and fixed. So that I'm aware of. Uh, but well, this is like the current status, as I said, it's not a release yet. Yeah, okay. As I said, I liked it. it I just uh, want to mention these minor things. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jan, you may have another comment. Do I see? Yeah, yeah I, I just do not want to ask all, all my questions if someone else is interested in, in their questions as well. So uh, my next question is uh, when we were talking about the generative code, uh, what if I update uh, some uh, description in the models? Can I actually regenerate the code with keeping the user uh, um, code, uh, which you have the comments there, uh, there intact? Or do I need to, you know, manually merge it together with the update? Yeah, that I, I will need to check. I think right now as it's implemented, it will uh, over, like if you select the same name, it will re rewrite the folder. So basically, if you have done some changes, in the code, uh, it will be like uh, like remote. Basically, you will have the, the generation again. The only, yeah, you will have to merge it uh, like manually. That's true that I haven't. Uh, yeah, because because usually when you have various uh, generation capabilities, you know, for example, we work with OSLC and there you have also the generator from the models. And it works that it has some, you know, annotations there or comments, blogs there that uh, kind of de determine which is user code, which is the auto-generated code. So when you update anything, it knows uh, which parts to update and which parts to leave intact. So I was just wondering if such functionality is there or if it's scheduled to be there sometime later. Yeah, the, the problem with that is like uh, what you are mentioning is when you are just directly generating kind of the code, but we are generating the structure of the project. We are generating. Like like other artifacts, like more things that is not just like code. So for me to actually have that kind of annotation and separation between the new code and the like the new code and the genetic code, I will need to go before generating inside of each folder and class and then compare it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it it's 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 like difficult people. to have this functionality. So uh, I'm just asking if if there is, for example, some plan to to provide this functionality because from the user perspective, it's very important if they can, you know, uh, use yeah. it uh, in a continuous way because you know when you are developing the services, you usually do not design everything uh, correctly from the scratch. You will need to do some updates, and uh, if uh, uh, the users cannot update the the code with keeping their the business logic intact, then it would be you know very hard for them to use such yeah, generators. True. 
Yeah, that's that's completely true. I mean, that is something that I need to think about it. Like when you said about the, the before the containers, I thought that was like <laughs> easy fixed, uh, but this one will require uh, more. Yep. Co like is is I mean it's possible. It's just a matter of like programming, and that that's like uh, time consumed <laughs> right now. Uh, but it's true that from the user perspective. Uh, that would be a, a really important feature. What you could do is just generate, like with another name, that specific system, because right now the granularity is in the systems. That's the the the, the smallest that I can go. But yeah, yeah, it's something that to to think to think and to take into account. Yeah, it's definitely something to to think of as a as a future work. Yeah. Uh, also, my last question would be when you were talking about the SQL scripts uh, in uh, here, uh, have you also considered actually uh, putting all this configuration directly to a running instance of Eclipse Arrowhead? Because I can also see people wanting to use this modeling uh, uh, modeling tool in a way that uh, they have already their systems running and deployed and they want to uh, reconfigure the communication between them. So they update the internal block diagram when you have the, the connections between the between the, the ports yeah, here. Mm -hmm. And then they will want to update uh, uh, this configuration mm -hmm. in their running Eclipse Arrowhead uh, services because it's very hard to use SQL scripts in there. It would be very interesting if they can just upload it directly through the Eclipse Arrowhead interfaces, the REST interfaces, and update it in the running instance to, to adapt to the new configuration. But that, that's something that can be done, I think, easier. Yeah, yeah, I think it shouldn't be that much different from yeah, generating the script. You will just directly send the commands uh, through yeah, the REST yeah. interface. And I think it would be quite interesting for various users to have this functionality in the modeling tool. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's something that is uh, yeah, feasible. It's just I'm about to connect in with the API. Hey, thank you. I think uh, we are a little bit running out of time, so if you don't mind, uh, we move ahead with the agenda. Thank you for uh, so deep uh, discussions and uh, giving ideas, Jan and uh, uh, Raimund and uh, all the others. And uh, I would go ahead uh, with the other feature presentation, uh, which I will present. So let's see if I can share my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, it will be brief. Uh, practically, uh, the second part of this you have uh, you may have seen in the uh, deep tech workshop presented by Tomas Bordi, uh, but I will put this into a big perspective on uh, AI ML tool in integration as I. Uh, promised. So we had a paper sometime uh, two, two years ago uh, about the DevOps pipeline uh, for Arrowhead capable cyber physical systems. And uh, in there, what we said is that the development and operations, uh, like the CI CD procedures um, that we use in software engineering uh, should be applied somehow into cyber physical systems and uh, the only real uh, drawback or uh, obstacle is that these cyber physical systems and the arrowhead capable systems uh, very often simply doesn't have uh, processors they just uh, have some uh, picks or uh, some plc's or or uh, things without operating systems, practically. And uh, having uh, continuous integration, continuous development tools for those systems uh, is, is very hard. But we should uh, do something about it, and we should uh, have uh, tools for that. And so this uh, pipeline actually shows that you have the embedded uh, development pipeline on, on the left-hand side. Uh, you have control system engineering, and you have enterprise applications and all of these 
have this continuous software integration uh, uh, and firmware integration tools. Then from these, we uh, build an artifactory and uh, we also add from the Arrowhead uh, plan descriptions, uh, we add these together and this becomes kind of Arrowhead resources that we have um, like a catalog, so to say, and these uh, software versions, firmware versions, and uh, binaries and all those uh, can be uploaded or modified or updated uh, to the embedded devices, the computing units, the enterprise uh, leg legacy resource and the enterprise cloud as also Arrowhead resources through these technologies like the over the air upload, uh, the continuous configuration automation or the infrastructure as code in the in case of the clouds or development uh, uh, automation in, in case of clouds. So already this picture shows you that if you want to run a complete Arrowhead runtime uh, service mesh, you have to deal with the um, endpoints in the local clouds uh, with PSCs and uh, low uh, computation endpoints and also uh, you can and have to deal with uh, enterprise cloud uh, resources. So this is kind of uh, just an overview. And uh, what happened uh, afterwards was that the, develop, the DevOps model that we usually see as a, as a two circle cycle uh, with a dev and an ops, it has been extended with the ML, machine learning. So this is what we now call MLOps. And uh, with that, we have uh, data that we train our models with, and uh, these models get into the uh, part, parts of our systems, but we have to verify them, package them, and release them very similarly as we do with the uh, general DevOps procedures. So this is what we are doing. Uh, all these steps now with software uh, related MLOps uh, projects uh, mm -hmm. that we do this kind of release management. And one note in here, what we will uh, show you in the Lulea workshop is that, of course, all of these uh, steps have their own tools, like uh, release tools, packaging tools, like uh, Jenkins, uh, configuration tools, monitoring tools. Uh, software development and verification tools, all these model building tools. And uh, we have these pipelines in uh, the machine learning AI scene. But also uh, what we learned from the Arrowhead Tools project is we need to minimize the human efforts. So what we sh will show you in, uh, in Ludeo, and this is already working, I just did, uh, doesn't, doesn't come up with the complete demo here, is that without many uh, or any human interactions, we can change this model only by giving a new data to it. So uh, for now, it is a model that is trained to uh, identify humans in the industrial site. So we have uh, human identification and uh, for safety reasons, for example, we will uh, light up uh, things if there's humans in places where they shouldn't be. But we could change uh, this model into, I don't know, identifying forklifts. Uh, and uh, we just drop in the data uh, that will be labeled and that will be uh, trained uh, through the model. Humans doesn't have to do anything. It gets verified, uh, packaged, released to Jenkins. And so we have now uh, Dockerized uh, AI ML model in our uh, infrastructure. So this is what we are we are uh, we have been doing recently, and what we will uh, demonstrate uh, in Luleo. One, one of the things. Now, but uh, this is also on only software, so to say. Uh, the next step is that we extend this into the cyber physical systems. Uh, this paper appeared in IFPC and SM this October, 
And uh, what it shows, this is what we call the Olympics model. Uh, on the top, you can see this MLOPS model uh, going uh, back and forth. But what was missing from this MLOPS model is kind of the, the hardware or the, uh, the firmware parts. One thing that we did in the Arrowhead Tools project is this uh, Arrowhead Tools engineering process, which you can see on the bottom. From the requirements, functional design, uh, uh, procurement, blah, 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 evolution, training, education. So that is the Arrowhead Tools engineering process. And that is what you can see here in the purple, uh, in the purple circle. So this purple circle keeps doing this uh, cyber physical kind of system engineering cycle. But as it goes, it, uh, uh, of course, it has new data, new uh, software, new firmware. And we also, by the way, uh, create digital twins, um, simulations, real time simulations of the cyber physical systems. And we sync this uh, digital twin with the physical part. And also, as we know, uh, we predict uh, things and uh, we build models and we have new data, all those things. So we actually get interference with the machine learning models. So the digital twin also feeds data to machine learning models. So all these cycles get interwoven uh, into each other, feeding uh, uh, data into each other, uh, needing verification uh, uh, from each other, verification and validation. So these cycles keep going up. Why this is interesting? Uh, not just because it's uh, visually appealing, but it's because all of these steps, as I just said in the MLOPS pipeline, uh, can have their own tools. As uh, Christina showed us, uh, we could have like this functional design and uh, deployment and commissioning and operation and management uh, uh, models based by model-based engineering, for example. And then those things run in the system engineering as, and as well the digital twin cycle. Okay, so this is what uh, Christina just showed us practically kind of a digital twin. Uh, the model was uh, updating itself uh, based on the physical changes. So um, what we can do in here is identify certain spots where we can uh, put our system engineering tools, as well as the MLOPS tools together, so we can uh, show all these running uh, with as little human interaction as possible, but verif verified, validated. And uh, we have uh, uh, all described here in this paper, tailoring MLOPS techniques for industry zero needs. And this paper goes further because uh, Java was brave enough to adjust the cloud infrastructure model uh, that uh, works in the MLOPS world in the cloud infrastructure in, uh, in here for our needs. And what you can see in here is uh, that you have all those cyber physical systems with blue on the top, which first appear as data sources. So we create data sources to the data platform where we extract the data, transform the data, and load the data into AI gyms or AI platforms, together with whatever we uh, get from the physical world, from the digital twins. So we load all these data, and we train and retrain with continuous training uh, our AI ML models down here in the, I don't know, this brownish yellow thing. Okay, so the, uh, Machine learning MLOps pipeline can be seen here again uh, with similar uh, tools as we learn in, in MLOps. So we have model evaluation, model release management. Uh, these things are pretty standard in the cloud MLOps uh, world, not in the CPS MLOps. We are just creating the CPS MLOps. And then on the right hand side, we have the, really the cloud infrastructure. Uh, the ML infrastructure, where we have uh, uh, where we have uh, software as a service products, AGI platforms, cloud AI platforms, or non-production environments, uh, where they have 
this is the kind of the infrastructure, metal virt virtual machines, lots of uh, computational power, uh, lots of memory, uh, scalable, all these things. And, and we run all these uh, MLOps things in this infrastructure. Then whenever we have the results, uh, we feed it back into the cyber physical production systems. And why this is not just a dream is because, as I said, uh, this right hand side uh, pink thing is already there. That's what the, the big players, Google, Amazon, uh, uh, Microsoft and others uh, are doing. And also the, the below part, the envelopes part is there. It's a lot of smaller players and as well as the big players doing. And of course, we are doing the top, the cyber physical systems, and we just started to do the green things, that uh, extraction and the AI gym, and the feeding in the, the digital twin. So our world, so to say, the cyber physical systems world, is now meeting the envelopes world uh, on a, uh, actual software uh, tools level. Okay, so this is also described with uh, many uh, uh, resources with, in, in this uh, paper, Maintain Memory MLOps Techniques for Emergency 5.0. And uh, so moving forward uh, to the AeroCAD world, and uh, Tomasz Bordy has uh, presented to you or to those who were there uh, in the breakout rooms. And you remember this documentation model uh, that we have. Uh, provider systems, SysDs and SysDDs, and the interface design descriptions and services in Arrowhead, you remember these. And uh, just imagine that these are now not your uh, physical systems, not your service providers uh, as uh, temperature sensors or vibration sensors or robotic arms, but they are AI, ML, trained models. So these are AIML trained models who has uh, service provider interfaces. Just imagine that. And uh, we create the same, in the same documentation model, we create a, a SysD and SysDD from them. We have the service descriptions of the AI tools, uh, IDDs, and uh, communication profiles, semantic profiles. So they really should behave as yet another uh, software or uh, hardware system in Arrowhead. Plus, of course, uh, they should have those uh, connectors to the mandatory core services, service registry, authorization, possibly orchestration as well. And they should have Arrowhead compliant certificate, again, just as well as any other system. So the nice thing about Arrowhead uh, is just now pops up that all these fancy new things, the machine learning models, uh, behaves as the, the, the same way as any other software and any other hardware element in Arrowhead. These are just application systems. So they have to just behave as, the, as microservice capable application systems. So the consumers should be able, uh, able to register into service registry. Uh, query uh, for the orchestration, consume the orchestration service, consume the uh, required services. But if they are AI more the tools providers, then they have to register in the service registry. They provide those services with their specified interfaces, non-secure or certificate or token security levels, and query the service registry for the public key service authorization. Okay, so uh, they really did and. Uh, this is nothing uh, fancy. This is the same things as we say in the three maturity levels as well. So if uh, we have now uh, AI tools already available, probably in the middle, uh, PyCharm or TensorFlow or other levels uh, created, uh, we just add Arrowhead compliant software uh, service interfaces to them. And this is what we are doing now. Uh, in the AIMS 5.0 project and partially in Arena PVN as well. Okay, so all in all, I wanted to uh, brief you it, with, with these news. Any questions? Uh, please go ahead. Ingolf? 
right? Uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Um, this is um, pretty interesting because we have uh, similar use cases here. Um, actually, what we did, for example, as a proof of concept, we um, had um, cameras also detecting, um, and well, we had not present but quality um, detection. Um, one criteria that we have is that the training, even the training of the data, you mentioned here that you're using the cloud and Google and where the resources are, like the real cloud. Um, we, in our use case, we really put it to the to the point that we just using the local cloud. So for example, you have like the shop floor and the data is by definition not allowed to leave the yeah. shop floor. You could so, have this edge AI or your own AI uh, cloud, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my question would be to, I believe it was the last slide, when you said like you're providing the the interface, um, what does it actually like? Um, I I didn't really understand what here yeah, the service interface. Uh, what does it provide exactly? Okay, so uh, this, as I said, is uh, just a, the normal AI or normal application system in Arrowhead, which looks like uh, this one, this application system, meaning that you have uh, other application systems who need, uh, I don't know, object identification or need uh, predictions or need uh, uh, sensor data or need whatever. And th their need uh, goes into the orchestrator asking for a service, asking for prediction, asking for in identification, asking for something. Okay, so, so somebody asks for that. And you, as an AI ML uh, model, you, as a service provider for that, this application system is, you can, if you can see my, uh, my arrow moving in here. Uh, so this application system has this service provider uh, lollipop, which is a provider lollipop. Uh, it, what it needs to do, to answer your question, what it needs to do, it must register to the service registry that I am a service, I'm providing a service for forklift identification or for uh, quality assurance in uh, scraps in, uh, in, in uh, certain products. Okay, so I, I go and uh, put my name into the service registry that I can do that. And whoever needs that service uh, goes, asks the, the orchestrator, the orchestrator peeks into the service registry database and, and uh, matches ourselves into uh, an, an Arrowhead service exchange. So what you need to do uh, is you have to have a lollipop towards the service registry, towards the authorization and towards the orchestration system. Uh, just the normal Arrowhead uh, capable lollipops, uh, microservices, mm, service restful HTTP interfaces that is described. Thank you. This, this is really cool. Um, actually, maybe this is for later or so. We recently published also a paper about Arrowhead uh, for advanced QoS. Um, and I think this fits perfectly in here because now you can actually even say like, okay, I want to have this classification of object detection, but mm -hmm. I just need to have like um, an accuracy of 70% or 65% mm -hmm. based on maybe cost or even like there's this one system which performs perfectly, but it can't handle all the que like the queuing. It just queues up because it's the perfect system. It has maybe, it, maybe it's an NVIDIA Jetson or whatever that has like more capability of our ones. And so you have a better distribution um, based on which quality you expect of this ML service. Uh -huh. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Thank you, thank you for the presentation. Okay, you're welcome, you're welcome. Jan, Jan Fjader, your both hands are up. No, no. So uh, I, I wanted to ask because I'm not um, sure uh, for which purposes are you using the AI LM uh, because at the start of the of the presentation we were talking about the um, ML Ops, which is, uh, uh, from my understanding, was to use the AI or L ML during the development and the operation of the Arrowhead services. Then later we were talking about 
providing AI applications as an Arrowhead compliant service? Uh, no, no, it is all it is uh, all the time I was talking about uh, applications, and this is creating also just uh, uh, application systems. Okay, so so even if the in the ML ops you are uh, actually uh, when you are talking about the ML at the beginning, you just mean using uh, uh, AI and ML applications uh, within the Arrowhead ecosystem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But but uh, these AI ML things uh, actually could get uh, data from the digital twin or from the physical infrastructure, if you want to say. Okay, so this whole thing, data uh, trainings and their regularity uh, should be um, synchronized and uh, real time, made, made it real time, you know, and this is something new, I think. This is not, uh, not explicitly said uh, out there that you have to do this. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely new. I was just wondering because the uh, most of this uh, most of this information is kind of expected to be uh, to be um, uh, obtained through the actual operation of the system to have yeah. the, the data to to provide the feedback which uh, where the devops is usually mainly about the development and uh, builds releases and yeah. so on and uh, the monitoring is kind of you know this this last part, small exactly. part of the of the process. So I was just not sure if 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 you really want to use it heavily during the development itself, or if it's mainly targeted to the operations phase of the. Development. Okay, I got you. So it's mainly targeting the operation phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? Because it's because many people would actually understand it from uh, from. Uh, uh, tying it up with the DevOps pipeline that you want to use it during the development, so it would be. Maybe, maybe, maybe try to to describe it in a clearer way so that everyone understand when the AI and ML is actually used. That is more in the operation phase and not but that no, much. No, 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 no. I think the DevOps, the DevOps, actually talks about both development and operations. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so usually, you, usually that... people usually mainly uh, imagine the development phase. Uh, because you know, uh, even in the operation, the release and configure is usually you know for that it's part of the development process anyway, and only the monitor is kind of taken as the as the operation part of the okay. of the I'll system. So uh -huh. so then then people usually take it that DevOps is mainly about the development and they how 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 people understand it, and the operation is just you know the small part many. Teams are actually kind of forgetting altogether, so they are not using it uh, uh, that much. So uh, th this is what I was unclear where the AI okay, and ML well, is actually you. being you, used here. I will highlight it next time uh, better. OK. Uh -huh. So any further questions, maybe? We're running out of little time, so uh, I, I actually stopped then uh, recording. Thank you for your questions and uh, and uh, what i will do now is uh,